Hello guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and welcome back. And here we are again with the uh, the book, the book model from uh, May. This one here, 9K37M1 book. Lovely model, got some fit issues, got lots and lots of flash and stuff, lots of ejector pin marks, but other than that, really nice kit. So, uh, where are we now? Part 7. Uh, when we when I left you last time into part 6, we basically finished off our launch turret. So that's all done. Um, we finished, we did some painting on this, didn't we? Which the actual launch mechanism itself. And then we finished off the hull with some hooks and some bits and pieces. And we then put these panels on here. What I did notice, as you can see, I've got some Mr. Surfacer in there. I think I showed you in my update chat. When you put this on, it sits slightly proud. There's not supposed to be a joint there. Um, my advice is to sand this to get it dead flat, glue it in, clamp it in place, and then you should just have a just a bit of filling to do just to sort it out. I ended up with actually this was stepped up higher than this, so it had a step going down that way. And um, basically, what I did was just flooded the back of it with glue again, and then clamped it really tight to to squeeze it back in with it with a little G clamp. And uh, now I've managed to get it flush. I squeezed it so tight, it actually dented the plastic. You can see that bit of Mr. Surfacer in there. So we're all done on that one now. Um, today is Sunday, Sunday the 8th of uh, December, 2019. So over here in the UK, we're just a few days away from our big election. God knows what's gonna happen. Um, so we've done basically all of this step here other than the PE because I want, as I said I want to paint in behind there in a matte black before I, before I put the PE on um, and I'm going to do the same on the inner hull area um, which is around here because we've got an engine grill there as well and when we look in there we don't want to see any tan plastic we just want to see matte black. So what it's telling us to do now is to actually attach the upper hull to the lower hull, which makes sense. You can see, if you haven't been watching, I haven't got the wheels on or anything yet. They're all on, um, they're all on uh, poly caps, so you can just basically, you can fit them on like so, and then you can pull them off again. So it's uh, no need to put the wheels on, you may as well leave them off, easier to paint them when they're off, and then go from there. So what we've got to do is fit this hull into here. So there we go, that just sits in that, and it's a, actually that is a very, very nice fit. Now, it's a bit saggy in the middle there, so I may, what I may do is clamp this up first. And for the, uh, for the novice modellers, this might be something worth looking at. When you actually use these hot liquid cements, like I've got here, these tamiya extra thins and stuff, they um, <clears throat> they tend to melt the plastic. Uh, we call them hot glues. So if you put glue in there and then squeeze it together, you'll get a, a, a glue oozing out, melted plastic oozing out, if you like. And uh, you don't want that. Now, if it's a weld seam, it can it can work to your advantage, but I don't believe this is. So what I'm going to do here, I've just noticed I've got a bit of flash there. So just get the coffee out of the way. There's a bit of flash there, just want to get that off. Okay, just make sure it's all clean. And then I'm going to plonk this together, wrong way round. It's got a step on the back that that goes over. We've actually got no ledge on this side, but we've got a small ledge on that side, so it's not 100% symmetrical. So what I'm going to do here, because of this baggy bit here, because this is moving, what I'm going to do is clamp it. Now, I should be able to get my pegs on there. Yes, I can. But as you can see, the peg, the pegs, pegs, the pegs flex the plastic, so we're going to have to clamp it where there's a vertical member. Now it's obviously going to try and pull it over, so I'm going to put one here. In fact, I'm going to have to put pegs all over this because it's uh, it's trying to lift everywhere. It's okay on the back there. What's making a noise? 
Ah, it's that hook on the front. I hate that sound, it sounds like something's broken and falling off. There we go. So now we can get in with our glue and get this sort. I've just noticed there's some flash on there as well. Look. In fact, I will get in there with a skinny stick and just quickly just rub that off. So yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of flash on this model, pretty much everywhere. You need to be really careful before you start going in with the glues, make sure that you're actually, you know, in a flash free area and you've got no fit problems. Test fit your parts. You've got a gap there. Oh God only knows, I'm gonna clamp that. Yeah, see that clamp wants to slide back. Um, I'm guessing I could put some quick setting in there and just hold it and let it go off. Anyway, we'll leave that corner till last. Okay, so, in fact, what I think I might do Put a drop of super glue in there. Let's get some thin super glue in my Pringles lid. Put a drop in there like that. Get a cocktail stick or anything. I'm going to use my um, glue applicator. And then just drop that in there. Hold it and that should weld that in place, well lock it in place. And then get a cotton bud and just wipe it over the surface and that will remove any excess super glue. It's decided to untack itself. That's glued in now. That side doesn't need the same treatment, that side's fine. Okay, so now we can. Uh, this is why I use these Pringles lids. Um, a few reasons. One is it's flat, you can't knock it over, you can't spill it. Two, once the super glue's dried, you can just get under it and flick it off. So be careful not because I've got fresh glue on there. But you can just flick it off, chuck it in the bin, and you're back to having a fresh, a fresh surface again. Okay. And three is a lot of people put a drop of tape down here or something, and then you put your arm in it. I can just move that now out of the way, put it over there, and it's uh, out of risk of getting knocked or, or touched. Or nobody's going to put their arm in it. The other thing is you might put your model down on it. You don't want that. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I use Pringles lids. So we're all clamped up now and ready to go. So I'm going to get my extra thin. And once again, I'm going to use a paintbrush because the trouble is with the, the little applicator you get in here, this little brush, it's difficult to get into places. So whenever you can, glue from the inside. So, you know, don't, don't struggle trying to get the little brush into the gaps or trying to get a neat job on the outside when you can just do this, just brush it in like so. And it's it makes life so easy. And you always get a nice, clean, glue-free joint.
go. I might just be able to get in there from this side. Here, I have to do it with the uh, from the outside. Plenty of glue in there. We want it nicely welded in place. We don't want to be uh, struggling with dry joints and stuff, or having anything crack on us. I can't remember if I put enough down in the back here, so I'm just going to put some more in there. And then do the same down here. And there we go that's that basically done now I need to go across the front as you can see we've got a little step there and I'm not sure if that's going to need sanding or anything I'm just going to basically brush the glue in there You can see there when I squeeze it, it oozes out and that could kind of give you a weld effect. So I'm just going to hold that there. Okay, so that's all dry now. That's been about an hour so I can take these, these pegs off and uh, see how it all looks. And we can see we've got glue in all those seams, all lovely. Everything is all nice and solid. We've got no gaps anywhere. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to need to fill that there or if that step should be there. I'll have to check my references, but um, I'm not sure that should be there. So we'll get these clothes pegs out of the way. OK, so what I need to do now is looking forward in the instructions, we've got all these doors going on the side here. Turn that off. All these doors here on the side, doors going on the top. And then we've got more doors going on the side, more doors on the top, greeblies, hatches, more doors. And um, basically, it's now just a case of adding doors and bits and pieces to the upper hull. Now, right at the end here of the upper hull assembly, well, pretty much near the end, they tell you to put this back panel in. Um, I'm going to do that now because all of this is quite flimsy. But before I do that, I'm going to paint all the inside of this so that when we look down through this engine grill here, we don't see any tan plastic. So I'm going to get in here and spray everything that I can. Um, I'm also going to spray, I've got the, this is the grill that goes over the top here. I'm going to spray the inside of that and I'm going to spray the inside of this door here, which goes there. And when I was taking that off, I thought, well, I may as well paint them on the sprue. Oh my God, painting on the sprue. <gasps> So I thought I may as well paint these on the sprue and then so what I've done any doors like these here that need to be painted on the back I've just put some dots on so they can be painted on the back um, and then these doors on the top they're very similar to the side doors here on the launch tower so what I want to do is make sure I get paint around the outside of these and also in fact, those are going to have to come off because the sprue gates are actually on there. So they're going to have to come off and be painted off the sprue. Um, they're the only ones. Nope, that one there as well is going to have to come off. So, uh, so yeah, I need to get on with that. And I'm going to basically paint all around here with my XF27 black green. And then do the same as I did basically on that turret and get everything so we've got no um, tan plastic showing through anywhere. So let me get these off and cleaned up and stuck on here. All this is is a block of wood, a block of scrap wood, and I get blue tack, stretch it out, stick it down to the wood, and then I can stick parts on it ready for spraying. That's, um, that's how I hold them. So let me get these off and get them cleaned up and then I'll be back. Okay, so we're jumping ahead, ahead a bit here. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, I've done all the painting. I've gone over with the uh, XF27, the green all around these edges to try and make sure that the paint's in there. And then I've gone over the <coughs> engine area. <coughs> excuse me. The engine areas here, I've gone over them with, um, with some XF1 flat black. And then once we put the covers on on the mesh, then it'll just be totally dark in there. We won't see anything. Um, 
A little tip for anyone building this, be careful, I actually made a mistake. Uh, when you glue the top down, there is a ledge inside here on the lower hole and the upper hole needs to be tight up against it so that when you put this rear panel in, it's nice and square. So my advice to anyone building this would be to put the rear panel into the upper hole perhaps before you glue it on and that way then you can guarantee that it's square. So I've had to cut that away down there, you can just see the glue marks. That'll all get cleaned up afterwards with some Mr. Servicer and some careful scraping and sanding, we'll get that sorted. So I am going to go on and put that rear panel in now. Why they're leaving it to the end I don't know. Um, some of these modeling kits these days, I don't know if the people that do these instructions have ever built a model in their life. Um, so I've just lost a part that I've just knocked a part across the bench. So I need to find that and then I'll come back. Right, <clears throat> as you saw my last snippet, I had all these little tiny bits here across the bench and then I flicked them with the instructions and I lost one of the parts and the part I lost was a tiny part A23 or A32 which is very similar to this part here which is C13 so you can see just how small it is um, and I have completely cleared my bench I have completely gone over the floor I cannot find it anywhere I've gone back watched the film um, that I was recording and replayed it at 10% and all it is I can see the instructions flick it and then it just becomes a blur um, I can see the shaft that went across that way and I got that but I can't see that tiny little part where it went it went under the tank hole um, and then forevermore it's disappeared so basically luckily because it's on the A sprue we've got two of them so I've got another one I've cut it off the sprue and I've got it currently sat in a um, in some silicone rubber and we're making a mold of it so yeah probably a bit overkill really but um, you know, at least it's uh, at least to know it's right at the end of the day. So, as I say, my advice to you is don't cut all the small parts off because that tiny little part is going to go in that little hole there. So I'm not going to glue it on yet because obviously I'm well, I'm probably going to have some seam work to do on this. So that fits in there fine now. The bottom of that's got to be pulled over, which is all fine, and then that's got to be cleaned up. But if we look in the instructions again, we've got this um, A and B thing. Um, here we go. So we've got, here it's telling us, oh, I keep, I'm just going to ruin things with these instructions, aren't I? Um, basically, we've got the rear panel here, B24, and it's telling us for versions A and B, we need to remove these little corner raised areas, which I'm assuming are reflectors or something. So um, I'm just going to come in with the knife and just shave them away. And if you remember before, I showed you using a curved blade. The reason I did that is because it's an intricate area and I was worried about the corner of the knife digging in. If you're working in an intricate area like this, the end of the knife will, will make a mark sooner than you can bat an eyelid. So if you're working away, away from a confined area like this, then a little blade like this is great because it's flat and you can kind of almost use it as a scraper rather than a, rather than a blade. So we can get rid of the majority of that lump there and do the same over here we go. I'm going to take a flat I use one of my um, premium hobby sanding box let's use the 220 grit we'll get it down quickly Again, no pressure, letting the sandpaper do all the work. And again over here. There we are, happy with that. And there we go, they're gone. So I'm just going to go over it now with some 800. Clean it off on my jeans. 
That'll just remove any sanding marks that I've just put in there. Just like that. So if you haven't got one of these, they're £9.95 from Premium Hobbies. And uh, there they are there. And you can, um, if you use the code NMB10, you get 10% off. So it actually costs you about £9. And uh, yeah, absolute bargain. Wonderful bit of kit. I wouldn't be without them. Um, really, really cool. I've done a review on them a couple of weeks ago. So have a look back and you'll see the, uh, the review if you're interested in getting some. Um, and some people have been telling me there's an issue with the website saying they're out of stock. But it assures me they're not out of stock. So if you want some, if you want a set, get in touch. Just place an order or give them a ring or drop them a text or whatever. There's numbers on the, uh, on the website. So there we go. So that's that cleaned up then. And I've noticed there was, a, there was an ejector pin mark that runs over onto the mating edge if you like. So I'm just going to take that away like so. That's gone now. So we can come down with this and just plonk it in. And I'm going to concentrate on the left and the top first of all. Now obviously it needs holding in. So what I want to do is hold that in before I put the glue on it. But what I want to make sure I don't do is have the glue touching the or have the tape sorry touching the joint where I'm going to put the glue. So I might be able to put that over there. And then hook that over there perhaps. No, we're going to have to do it with uh, with holding it. So, but what I might do is the same as did on the front, but drop a super glue in, and uh, just to hold it, and then put the uh, extra thin in afterwards to give it the weld action. Let me go off camera and see if I can work this out. Something's not right here. Okay, so there we go. I've glued the back end in now. Uh, basically what I did, I went round with my little glue looper again and some super glue and a Pringles lid. And I just basically tacked it in in the corners, got it all locked in place. And then gone round with a pretty generous amount of the extra thin and then taped it all up and pegged the top and everything. So yeah, it's, um, it's in there now and it's pretty solid. As I said, I would recommend if you are building this model, I would recommend obviously do a dry fit first. I can't do that now, it's too late. But um, I would actually glue this rear panel into the upper hull before you get the upper hull anywhere near the lower hull. Because as you can see, I've got a slight gap down here where I've just put some super glue to fill it. And you know, I had the problem over here. So basically, it, it goes, goes together very nicely, but. Um, I think it would go together a lot better if you glued that into the upper hull and then glued the top down. Um, I'm sure you get a much better job. Also notice I've gone round, I put some plastic card in, there was a big slot in the front there, so I put some plastic card in there. So I'm just now going to trim that off, like so. And then we can take our round section knife and just give that a bit of a shave and then um, we can do some work on that afterwards to clean that up and um, we've got to put some Mr. Surface in there and get it sanded 
smooth a lot of people don't worry about this sort of area underneath the wheel arches and stuff um, I couldn't build the model and run out of those holes along there I'm sorry but I just couldn't do it so that's me uh, some people don't worry about it some people if they've got tanks where they've got side guards on they don't even put in the the upper row of track links I, I always do um, I, I like to, to see I just like to know that it's done and done as it would have been on the real thing so um yes yeah, so we've got the upper hole glued onto the lower hole now that glue that's going off I'm going to put some mister surface around there let this back end go off get some mister surfacer in these joints I use mister surfacer on everything and then uh, and then I'll come back and we'll see where we go from there okay so here we are now this is actually uh, I think about three or four days later than um, than a couple of seconds ago so while I've been away uh, I've done all the mister surfacer as I said I would sanded it all down um, cleaned up all around the back got a nice seamless joint around there now I've looked at some um, walk around shots on online and there is actually no no seams around here or anything it just looks like a one solid cast lump to be honest so um basically that's the way I've tried to portray it so it's got no seams no weld lines no joins or anything around there at all um hopefully once the paint's on well, that's what it'll look like so basically that's all where we are now and if you remember uh when I was looking earlier on through the instructions just a few minutes ago according to the video but uh, a long long time ago for me um, if you remember, I lost, where is that rear panel going on? If you remember, I lost a part A32, which is, um, there it is, it is, it is on this page. That part there, A32, which is a basically a rear light. So we've got one on the end there, which is a separate part. And then there's one here, which is actually on its own. And if you remember, I moved the instructions, I flicked it and I could not find that anywhere. I completely cleared the bench and couldn't find it anywhere. So there's the, luckily it's an A32. So there's just two sprue A's because um, you also require one of these on the front. So that's the part there. And then there's my resin copy you can see there next to it so that's uh that took a little bit of time to do so we're all ready now to put them on once we've done some more work i don't want to put anything like that on now because it'll just get broken off and that little light unit actually sits in that corner there so as you know i've sprayed all as you see i've sprayed the green and the black and everything then all inside these doors um so they're all they're all done now they're all looking good then inside there and as you can see here i can show you straight away um when you do these this stuff like these mesh like this panel here is going to go uh that way up it's going to go on here like so but if we look at it it looks great doesn't it all looks lovely until we go like that and we can see that on that side it's not painted so i've got to get that in fact i'll get that painted when it's on because it's easy to get it's from here so so i'll do that once it's on um and then we've got these other bits and pieces across the back here to fit these three C parts here. Uh, I'm going to leave them off for now because one of them I've already put that light on and it will just get knocked off if I'm not careful. Um, there it is there. We've got a lot of little sub assemblies to come together. There it is there and that's just going to plonk on there like so. Well, actually it may be okay to put on that light's protected by the, the rest of the bodywork. So we've all put these parts on now. So let's get these done. Let's get our extra thin over. So I can just, that's in place. I can just put a drop of extra thin on each end and let it run around. So that's that one in place. And then we've got C54 is the wider one that goes off to the side and they fit with the, the buckle part on the top. And again, because there's another reason for doing that green, if there's a gap down the side there that you can see in, um, you probably would struggle very much to get paint in there once it's all on. And then this one here is actually going to fit over that bit there. 
So it's funny, they've got hatch detail on there and then you cover them up with these, these doors. It's strange. There we go, that's that one glued on as well. In fact, I'll just put some more in there just to make sure because we are going onto a painted surface. There we are. So that's all that done. B8 I'd already fitted, that's that one there. B19 is this big one here that goes there. So that's that one, is it? Yes. So that one's going to go on like that. And then when I put this on, you'll see exactly why I sprayed all around the the green areas because you can see that there's a ledge under there that you wouldn't be able to get paint into. So what I am going to do is just take my little skinny stick and just gently rub over here and get rid of this paint. In fact what I'll do, I'll use this curved blade and just scrape away the paint. From these faces. Okay, and we're ready then. What I'll do is I'll do all of these because if I leave it till if I glue this door on first and then do these, I'm likely to um, damage the the door next to it. So. Okay, so to fit this uh, main this main door onto the top, I'm going to use my Mr. Hobby Mr. Cement Deluxe because it's slightly thicker. And what I can do is just paint it all over these edges. And hopefully it will stay wet long enough. Me to get this door on. There we go. So that's on now. And I'm so glad I painted this around here first because now you can see when you look down in there, you know, you would never get the airbrush to get the paint in up under that corner there. Or under like around here, you'd never get it in there but you'll probably see it when you look at it, especially under a bright light. Pick it up, look at it, you'll see bang, bright tan plastic. So that's that one on. Now I think now it's just going to be a case of cutting doors out and sticking them on. So I'll go off camera and get these doors off and then we'll get them put on. I've also got to add that little bar down there, that part B20. Um, as I say, the rest of it is, the rest of this is all done then, except for that one A32, which I'm not going to put on. So I'll just put a red circle around there and a little star to tell me that there's a missing part on that page. Okay, so that's all those parts now. They're all off and all cleaned up, ready to go on. So if we work from the back forward, we've got this door here, which is going in first. Now we've got these little bits at the bottom, which are our hinges. So that's going to go on like that. So I can get this one on. And then I can get it glued from inside. So I just want to check it's on properly because I don't think it is. So I'm going to hook that hinge into there. There we go, that's in there now, that's in nice. So I should be able to do this with the ordinary now I will use a paintbrush, I think. Let's get a paintbrush so I can get in there a lot. There we go. So that's that one on. What if I can get the get to the top? There we go. And then the next one is this funny shaped one. So we'll clip the hinges in at the bottom and then close the door just like so, like so, make sure it's in properly. There we 
go. And then we've got this little tiny hatch here. You kind of wonder with all these doors, I wonder if they're intending to bring out a full interior kit or something. Or if they just decided to do this with doors so that it just looks more accurate. Or it looks better, should I say, not more accurate. Having all these holes everywhere makes life uh, makes life a lot easier for us. Just get down inside there. I'm gonna put some more on there, I think. As I said, the last thing you want is these falling off. And then we got this long one. It's a bit of a tight fit that one so be careful with that one make sure you push it right in and I'm actually keeping the pressure on while I'm gluing this guy so that it doesn't get any opportunity to ooze out the last thing you want is blobs of glue oozing out around the, around the edges of what are supposed to be just doors that are shut and then finally we've got this little one here going on I was trying to put the hinge in the wrong place then. So we'll get on to that one. Down in there. And there we go. Do a bit of clean up on that Mr. Surfacer as well. Same on this side. And then We've got this what looks like some an air intake or something. You get you get these sort of things for Land Rover Defenders to stop the uh, I think there's almost when it's snowy weather to stop the snow going into the air intake. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what this is. So that's on there like that. And then finally we've got this little rod at the back and it goes with the feature end at the top. So that's just going to sit in there and once again we've got massive holes with tiny pins. So we just put a drop of glue there. bit weird this it doesn't want to fit in both the holes there we go it's gone now and there we go guys so that's that side done next we're going to move on to the other side so I'll get that done off the camera and then I'll come back once I've finished step nine. Okay, so I said I was going to get all this glued on, but I haven't. Uh, I got all the parts off here, these, um, these parts here uh, and, and this C66, this stiffener up the middle. They're going to need Mr. Servicer around them because as you can see, if I can show you in the close-up shot, um, the, the, the actual holes, the, 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 the slots fit into are wider than the parts, so you've got great big gaps. So I need to get in there and, um, and sort them out. Uh, and also the same here around these pins here. I've got this piece going in the side, which I haven't actually got off the sprue yet. Is this B? Yeah, this is B and it's B7 I'm after. So if we get B7 off, like so. Just give that a trim. 
my matted Rosano stick nice and flat. Get that edge cleaned up. Like so. And then that's just going to fit in there. And again, we've got an ejector pin mark on there, which is flashy. So that's going to hold the part away. And the same here, we've got another one there, look. So that's your big awareness thing with this model, guys, is keep your eyes open for these ejector pin marks. That one's actually raised. So let's scrape that away. And then sand it. like so and then that can sit in there and I'm not exactly sure why they've made that as a separate piece I can't see why they didn't just mold it like that really don't know that <laughs> very strange so again we're gonna have to have some missing surface around the edge of this I think because it's gonna I think the edges are gonna show and again we've got the you can see the you can see the sides of the tab in there. If I point them out with a knife, you can see there's a gap there and a gap there. So they're going to have to be dealt with. So a load of work for a part that didn't even need to be molded separately. I don't really don't know why they've done that still. You know how much I love using Mr. Servicer. In fact, I'm going to make sure I get plenty of glue in there. And then the one of the problems with using Mr. Servicer, if there's not a lot of glue in there, is the Mr. Servicer will just capillary into the gap. So you end up with a bit of a skin on the surface and then when you sand it away you've just got a, a gap where it's all pulled itself in. And now you can see those gaps, gaps in the bottom have grown there as well. So yeah, a bit of a shame. Right, so let's get these, um, let's get these doors on. So we'll start off with the smallest one here at the front which is the B2. So hold that one in place. <clears throat> Get the paintbrush again. And we'll get in there. Get the glue on it like that. So that one in place and then the next one is this little B45 just touch my finger with the glue then just pull it straight away pull away you can see I managed to get glue around the outside there so I won't touch it and I'll just settle down I'm going to jump straight away from that gap to B33, which is this next big door here. And then we've got that one there. That's gone in and then we've got these two here which appear to not want to fit. There we go, that's gone in now. I'm not sure I can get to that from in here. We'll give it a go. Yep, yeah, just just get onto it. And then this one here. I managed to pull some glue out there on my finger, so 
leave that, let it dry, and then we can sand it. Something I've actually just noticed there, if you ever want to uh, replicate surface rust, if you put some glue on your finger and just pull away, you get a really good impression of surface rust. And then finally, we've got this door here. This one here is made up of these two parts. You've got this B44 and B48. And this is obviously some kind of air intake or something. Um, because it's a vent, I painted it before I put it together. So I've got to make sure I've got paint all in the area around behind it. So that when we look at it, we don't see any tan plastic. But uh, you know the score by now, what I do and the reasons I do it in my little world of madness. So we can get some glue on there. Try and get some on that side. Oh no, it's running my finger again. Ugh. Obviously the brush came through the gap, which is made by that vent. There we go. So there we are guys, I'm going to call that a day for this part 7 and um, <coughs> excuse me, we'll get some Mr. Servicer on here and then I'll be back with part 8 and I think we'll pretty much get the building finished in part 8 and then we can start looking at um, getting some paint on the thing. So um, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for donating and pledging money to the channel. Um, if you want to support the channel, details are down below. And uh, again, thanks for watching, thanks for all your comments, and this is proving to be a, a pretty popular build by the look of things, and um, I'm sort of trying my best to show you some little tips and tricks, and you know, like with this, getting this painting done first, it all helps to, uh, you know, to, to, to make your model look really realistic, and um, not have tap bits of tan plastic sticking through and, and stuff like that. So, um, I say again, thanks for watching. And I will see you all very soon for part eight. Bye for now and happy modeling.